Mark, why is Texas Motor Speedway an asset to professional racing in general? Texas Motor Speedway is an iconic venue. We're getting close to celebrating our 30th anniversary here in Fort Worth. We have 1,500 acres that enable us to be a great motorsports, sports, business, and entertainment destination. We're a huge asset. Obviously, NASCAR plays a big part in what we're about, what we're trying to accomplish. We just recently announced our 2025 schedule, May 2nd to the 4th. It's going to be a fiesta weekend around Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but our last race was a truly international crowd. We had ticket purchasers from all 50 states in the United States, the District of Columbia, 14 countries in the world, including as far away as Australia, Europe, Uruguay, and obviously Canada and Mexico. So we're really an important fabric of the motorsports community here. This venue is centrally located, as you know, um, in the center part of the United States, and people come from all over the world for our events. What about the market, the Dallas-Fort Worth market, having this area, and, and, and you know, I knew that's why TMS was built in the first place 30 years ago. DFW is a great market, fourth largest market, soon to be third market in the United States, highly competitive for sports and entertainment. That helps us. That helps us be on our game. What can we do? How can we evolve as a facility? Sure, we were constructed for motorsports. That's always going to be at our core. We have driving schools, racing schools, key motorsports event. Last week we had Tony Stewart, one of the icons, come in for a Speedway children's charity event called the Tony Stewart Smoke Show, where people were able to drive out here on the track. That's always going to be our core. How can we evolve, though, in this landscape and find our niche? And that's what we are about as far as whether it's music festivals, car shows, or other things that might appeal to people locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. What are some of the ideas y'all are kicking around? Well, most recently, uh, most recently we had our first two-wheel event. We had Super Motocross playoffs last month, and that was a fantastic event for us where we were the second round of the playoffs. We had uh, some tremendous action. It was new. It was right over in our ball field where they created a unique atmosphere and a unique track. And we had, again had fans from all over the globe come in for that. We have Hispanic festivals, and so we had a Hispanic festival last month. Again, another new event where free to the general public, fans could come out to Texas Motor Speedway and they could watch and celebrate Hispanic culture. Those are some of the events that we're doing, some of the new events that we're going to bring in and have brought in, in addition to other country music festivals or other festivals that we're exploring right now. Is all of that uh, enough revenue? I mean, how are, the, how are the books? The books are great. We're solid. We had a great year last year. Matter of fact, our sales team was the uh, sales team leader nationally for Speedway Motorsports, our company. Uh, we have a multitude of tracks throughout the United States, and our sales team did a great job. So we see increased sales. We see increased sponsorship, premium seating ticket sales for events coming here we see growth and that's why we want to bring new events and expose new fans to what we have here at this iconic venue. Is, is there anything off the table as far as the sort of the idea of evolving the facility? I mean you guys have talked about obviously a lot of different things but I, I wonder you know could you play football here? Could you play soccer here when the World Cup comes around? Can you do more music festivals? I mean it sounds like you guys are considering just about anything. We are. We're open for business and we're open for new, uh, new events and new ideas. We could play soccer here. Um, you know, we've, we've let people know that we can play soccer here. Look, we have 1,500 acres here. Um, at some point, could there be a development that goes along with soccer? We, we look at a master plan development. Marcus Smith, our CEO and one of the Smith family owners working closely with Fort Worth and other entities about what does this look like? What can we imagine here to be a multi-purpose facility? We already are a multi-purpose facility for business. What else could we do for entertainment? And sure, it could be soccer and it could be festivals and other elements that go with that. Um, how was revenue this year without IndyCar? 
You know what, revenue is doing great. Um, we were disappointed that we could not agree on a mutually agreeable date for IndyCar. And when NASCAR shifted from the fall to the spring, we were just um, limited on date availability. We couldn't have IndyCar. We've had a robust year, and some of those events that I mentioned earlier were great tentpole events for us in the fall, complementing our triple header NASCAR weekend that we have in the spring, and we're going to look for more of those events in the future. So is the strategy then to encourage more sort of smaller tentpole events, as you call them, to, to compensate for the loss of a premier event like that one, a well, big one? Those events that we had weren't small. I mean, you know, there were 15, 20, 25, upwards of 30,000 people per event. So when we have a triple header weekend, like we do for NASCAR Cup weekend, we have tens of thousands of people. We're looking to aggregate that in the fall as well with some of those events. We're healthy, um, we're profitable, and we certainly continue to look for new events to bring in here. Um, I think for the entirety of the three decades this has existed, heat has always been a challenge. I think it's why NASCAR is interested in spring races. Um, can you overcome that heat? Does that limit what you all are able to do because it's, it's so hot, there's no shade, you've got a lot of concrete and steel around here? You know, that's a great question, and, and we can overcome heat. It just depends on what time of the day you have the event. We've run night races in the past. We've had driving schools at night. We've had music festivals at night. So depending on the time of the year, we have to be cognizant. We're always number one is going to be fan safety, guest safety, stakeholder safety out here. So if an event is going to be in the hotter months, what can we do to offset that? And we're certainly going to have hydration. Uh, we want to make sure that there's cooling systems where needed you know, when we have those events, but we have to plan and program our events. So the public events might be fall. Once you turn the page on Labor Day weekend, we get through that a little cooler time. During the summer, can we have special events? Can we have corporate events? Can we have track rental events that don't mind those hotter temperatures? And we'll work through that. You mentioned sort of the idea of mixed use developments and development in the area. Are you having active conversations with developers right now about building either on your property or near your property? There have been, there have been conversations by developers uh, talking to the Smith family since uh, probably the first shovel was put in the ground close to 30 years ago. There's always ongoing discussions about um, what can be imagined with this property. As, as you know, when this was um, opened in 1997, there was no development out here really to speak of. As you see, as you look around here now, there's uh, retail, there's um, homes, there's mixed use, there's commercial out here. And so ongoing discussions, we always look about how can we improve this property. Um, it always goes back to our ownership in the Smith family. What's the master plan? What's their vision? What can we do from this property? And we work deliberately and have conversations with people on an ongoing basis uh, long before I, I started here two years ago. So always looking at ways to, to better what we're doing here for the tens of thousands of people that visit uh, this campus on a, on a yearly basis, hundreds of thousands of people. You got a lot of traffic, obviously, on, on 35 coming up here. Is part of the strategy encouraging people to pull off the interstate and come visit when there are no racing events going on here? I mean, is there a way to attract visitors when there's not a, a key event that day? Oh, absolutely. So we have track tours for people. You'll be amazed at the people, and you're exactly right. We just moved our Hall of Fame outside to the front circle. So that was a fan enhancement because it was in a glassed area that fans don't always have access to. We said, what can we do for the fans? So we have that opportunity for fans and literally promote that, pull off off the highway, come get your photo in the podiums with some of the greats of the Texas Motorsports Hall of Fame that we have out there. We have track tours, so people will come, they'll tour the facility, they'll go down to the infield, they'll be able to drive around the track. So we're open 365 days a year. We'll have those opportunities for fans to come take tours 
um, even when we have other events here at the Speedway Club building, for example. When did y'all move the Hall of Fame? Uh, we recently did that two months ago. Two months ago, yeah. okay. And what, what prompted that conversation? Well, when we explore the campus and what we're doing here, they were the, the pedestals and the celebration of the great drivers um, were not in an area that could be showcased to fans uh, 365 days a year. So we looked and we said, okay, what can we do for the fans where they have that opportunity to come and honor some of the people that we have inducted into that hall? And so uh, we moved it out front and it's an easy way for people to come in and literally you don't have to have a ticket. You literally can drive up, you can park in the parking lot and you can spend time um, with some of the great racing legends here. So that was one of the things that we're doing. We did a, uh, uh, the same thing with our, our front lobby and we wanted fans to come in here. We also have a merchandise store here on the second floor. Come on in, check out the trophies from our races, see some of the greats that have won races, come up to the merchandise store. We always change up merchandise, come buy merchandise, and it's just something about what we're trying to do for the fans each and every day. I think there's been a conversation for several years, mostly involving NASCAR, um, that Texas Motor Speedway has so much seating that when you watch a race on TV, it doesn't look full. I think there have been rumors or speculation from fans that maybe the seating should be reduced, you should cut some of the grandstand, create more uh, maybe luxury space. Have you all had conversations about doing that? You know, we don't, we want to, instead of thinking about it as reducing capacity, it's more about how can we enhance the fan and guest experience. And so we did some modifications here, um, right over in the grandstands where we uh, did some enhanced seating, to your point. We did uh, tray areas so you could put your food and drink there. We um, enlarged some of the seating so that fans, you know, we're the only sport really that allows you to bring your cooler in here. We're fan friendly. Bring your cooler in, have more leg room, have a drink rail, food drink rail where you can put your food and drink and give you an enhanced experience as opposed to when all of these facilities were constructed, seating was confined to an 18 inch seating, right, location. Well, tastes have changed and people have changed to what they want to get and how they want to consume their sports. We do surveys all the time and one of the things that fans say is, I don't want to be constricted, I want a great fan experience. So we modified that. We did uh, Drink Rail, the world's largest belly up bar from turn four to turn one. I think it's about 4,000 square feet or the length of 10 football fields. So as a fan, if you want to get up out of your seat and stand and watch an event, and walk around and move around. We've given you that, uh, that opportunity to do that because we are so large. We took out some of the, the paneling and some of the seating area so that you could actually, and we built three belly up bars, 7,000 square feet on the concourse where you can go up to the belly up bar, all these bars, and watch through the grandstands, the racing while you're in the concourse. Again, to your point, when we had a race in September and it was warm, fans want to get some shelter. Okay, well, let's provide them shelter. Let's create islands of entertainment for them to come and watch the race from inside a cool area to bar, watch through. We have Big Hoss that we modified uh, last year. It's now the largest single LED screen in North America. It's over 22,000 square feet, another fan enhancement. So we're doing a lot of things for fans it's not about reducing capacity, it's more about thinking how can we enhance the fan experience. So you're not prioritizing, I guess, what, what it looks like uh, on TV, for example, it's more about how it feels to be here. TV's always a, com a component, right? It's always a component. Fans will buy tickets in locations that meet their desires for the race. And we talk to a lot of fans. Why did you buy your tickets in turn one? Why do you buy your tickets and start finish? Why do you go higher? Why do you go lower? What can we do to accommodate you? How can we improve your experience? And like I said, we do a lot of surveys on that. We talk to fans a lot. We talk to them and say, what's important to you? What's the food and beverage component look for you? What's important to you? When we have our Fiesta weekend next uh, May, we're already talking to fans. We're talking to Levy, our food and beverage provider, about 
what can we do special for fans when they come here to celebrate that weekend and do something unique from a food and beverage entertainment opportunity. We look at parking, we look at ingress, egress. So it's a holistic approach to the entire fan experience. You mentioned NASCAR, you know, obviously is, is there, you moved to the spring because it's hot. There used to be two races. Are there conversations about restoring a second race here or you think that's done? Well, it's important to keep in mind that we had a race moved to Austin, Texas at CODA Circuit of the Americas. So our team manages that on behalf of Speedway Motorsports. So we have two spring races. Next year, Coda is the first weekend of March. Our race is the first weekend of May here at Texas Motor Speedway. We had the all-star race here. And as you know, it moved to North Wilkesboro to celebrate the 75th anniversary of NASCAR. North Wilkesboro happens to be a Speedway Motorsports uh, track. So while we didn't get that race, it did move to one of our sister tracks and it stays in the family. As a result of that moving, they moved, NASCAR did, from the fall experience, and you mentioned the heat, moved that race back to the spring because we had that open window, which does enhance the guest experience when you drop about 20 to 25 degrees in temperature for the fans. So we always want to have more races. We want to have more events. Uh, for now, it's going to be Coda, and the all-star race um, stays at North Wilkesboro, but we don't know what the future holds. Look, we talk to NASCAR all the time. I mean, you can see how they're moving and how they're expanding into other areas. Um, if something happens, we already have the availability. They know we'd like to have a second race back. I think there are a lot of outsiders who would look at, at what's happened with IndyCar and say, well, now TMS only has one major premier racing event. Um, you know, primetime racing event. Do you feel that way? Do you feel a sense of urgency to bring more things here? Well, we had a, we had a long-standing relationship with IndyCar going back 27 years. Because of the move that we talked about, we couldn't find a mutually agreeable date for IndyCar to slot into our schedule uh, based on what they wanted to achieve and what we wanted to achieve, especially in the spring. We were date constricted in the spring and it, in the spring and it didn't work out. As a result, they're changing a lot of their programming going forward and they wanted to move to temporary street races, which um, they did for the move to Arlington in 2026. We always are looking for, for new programming, new events, new motorsports. I go back to what I mentioned earlier. We had an open window because IndyCar didn't race in the fall. Um, we had talked about it, but it didn't work with their programming to play Super Motocross in the fall as one of those fall events or the Hispanic Festival that we have. So we're always out talking to people about what type of event can we bring here, either existing or new events. We're always, you talk about a sense of urgency. We work on that every day. So it's not like just because IndyCar went to do a, a Grand Prix of Arlington in 2026 and, and you know, great for them. We're always working for new events and what can we do new events? We have between, in, here in the infield, the oval, driving schools and events in our uh, Speedway Club building here, you know, 250 plus events a year. So it's, you know, we're, we're busy all the time. I mean, the past weekend that we had here, we just had October Truck Madness, on Saturday, we had NRE driving school the same time at the Oval, and we had high limit dirt track racing all the same day and the same night on Saturday. We had three major events. Friday night, we had dirt track racing, we had a gala event at Speedway Club, and we had October Truck Madness loading in. So I mean, we're busy all the time. There are some dates that we're really constricted on where people say, can you get us in 2025 at this date? Sorry, that's booked. Let's look at 2026. So we're already looking down the horizon, always trying to find new dates and new events. What can the city of Fort Worth do to help? You know, they're already been great. And we've, we've, the city of Fort Worth, we've made a concerted effort to um, engage when I came on board. And not that there was an engagement, but that's one of the things that we wanted to do when I came on board was, what can we do collaborative, collaboratively with the city of Fort Worth 
and visit Fort Worth and the Fort Worth Sports Authority to work together to bring new events. Again, this is a unique outdoor um, venue here, so what can we do to, together to create a new event and or bring events here that need a footprint of our size? They're great partners. We're always working with the city of Fort Worth to try to, to do new things, always in constant dialogue, and we'll continue to do that. My last question. Um, if you had your druthers five years from now, how would TMS have evolved? If I had my druthers five years from now, I would think TMS would continue to grow with new events, uh, continue to focus on the core of motorsports, which is at the heart of our facility for fans from all over the globe. Always be respectful of that, but create and bring new events to this area that may not have been here before, continue to cement that, and then continue to grow beyond that.